there is a music stand somewhere. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, I pray, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to, in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So, by quick show of hands, how many of you have gone on Ancestry.com or one of the Ancestry sites? Anybody? Am I the only Ancestry geek in the room? Okay, cool. I'm not alone. How about the 23andMe, the, geni the uh, DNA testing to see where you come from? Anybody done that yet? I really want to do that. I just want to see. I want to see where it goes and what we get from that. Um, but, we'll, you know, we'll see. There's, it seems as though there's a lot of excitement from people right now to discover um, where their people come from, to discover a little bit of who they are, where they're from, and even a renewed sense of, of purpose based on that understanding. There's so much available for us to be able to research this now with technology, um, which is making doing family history a breeze. I know when I was in college, I was a history major, and one of my friends, sorry if I'm doing that, uh, one of my friends loved to do gene genealogical research for her family and other people. She would spend days at the Library of Congress just going through microfiche, and uh, anybody remember microfiche? It's this like film stuff you had to roll through. It wasn't like the internet, it was just really bad. Um, but anyway, she would roll through that and she would call, um, call churches all over the place and find out death records and baptism records and things like that just to try and put all this together. Now what do you do? You go to a website, you punch in a little information, and boom, a leaf pops up, you follow that leaf, and all of a sudden you've got your family tree. How easy has it come? It's amazing. Um, so while this is somewhat new and exciting for us, the idea of knowing who we are and caring about who came before us has been around for a long time. It was especially important to the Hebrew people if you want to see for yourself, just read the book of Numbers. Anybody ever read that? Um, and this person begat that person, who begat that person, and it just keeps going on and on. It was important to them. For the Hebrew people, being able to trace their roots back to Abraham was of great importance. It helped to give legitimacy to the claim that they were of the chosen people of God, part of the covenant and promise made by God to Abraham. So it should be no wonder for us that both the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew and Luke uh, start with a genealogy of Jesus. Matthew was writing for a primarily Jewish audience and traced Jesus' lineage back to Abraham, while Luke, writing to a primarily Gentile audience, traced Jesus' lineage all the way back to Adam and Eve. Now, if you look too closely at the two genealogies, uh, you will scratch your head trying to understand why the two seem to be very different. Some have thought that the one gospel um, traced through Joseph and the other through Mary, but scholars have determined that's not true. They both trace through Joseph. Um, for me, I don't get too worried or surprised by this. Uh, in my own genealogy, like I said, going on Ancestry.com, I've had family members that have come in and gone into the tree and confused juniors and seniors and other people, and it's just all this big mess. It's all the same family, just people got a little bit confused on where people went, and I'm still trying to fix that. If anybody is an expert at this and knows how, see me after the service, because I'd love to find out. This is also not a new quandary, having the, the two um, being confused and people trying to figure it out. In the fourth century, a historian by the name of Eusebius wrote a book titled The Ecclesiastical History. And in it, he tries to create an explanation for why the two genealogies are seemingly different, but still match. And 
I could go on a whole sermon series trying to explain the way he explained it. Um, and it's a very fun mystery to dig into. And because of that, I'm going to leave you to it. So if you want his name and the name of the book, I'll give it to you after the service. Dig in and we'll have conversation afterwards. But to get to the root or heart of Jesus' lineage, I think our passages from today do a really good job. I told Pastor Kate this week uh, that I feel like both of these passages are mic drop passages. They're just amazing uh, looks into, um, they, they stand on their own and they share powerful images and understandings of who Jesus is and where he comes from and why. In the Isaiah passage, you have the shoot coming up out of the stump of Jesse. Do we still have that picture up? So Mike, is this the one? Awesome, very cool. Um, several years ago with youth group, it was when it was still a big stump and a little tiny shoot coming up and we did a whole lesson as a youth group around that. And you could see how much that little tiny shoot has grown since then, but it literally was this dead tree stump and just this little shoot coming up straight out of the center and now it's becoming a whole new tree again. It's an amazing image. It's so, so cool. And it was a great lesson. It was so great that, thank you, God, for putting that there because that was cool. And if you go out here in the parking lot, it's right there. Um, but you also have the image of um, the wolf living with the lamb and the, the uh, calf and the lion and the, and the kids playing over it. Don't do that at home, please. Don't have the kids play over a snake pit. I mean, it's a great image here, but I just don't recommend it. Um, but God is good, and hopefully we'll take care of that. But the images are amazing for the peaceful kingdom that is created uh, by God and is ushered in through Jesus Christ. In the Luke passage, you see how Jesus is the fulfillment of the promises made to Abraham and all God's people by God. These are amazing passages. In our study of the lineage of David, we are brought now to Jesus, the shoot sprouting up out of the stump of Jesse, one who is in the line of David and is part of God's promise to all made through Abraham, and we are a part of that promise. But I know I said the genealogies are kind of goofy for Matthew and Luke, and if you're still hung up on that and needing a reconciled genealogy for Jesus, maybe look to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, where it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. Mic drop. Amen. So for our discipleship uh, commitment this week, shared here, and I get wordy, sorry, I'm just goofy that way. Uh, but knowing who we are and where we come from is important. But knowing whose we are is vital for our faith as Christians. Through Christ, we are adopted as children of God. I ask you, add yourself as part of God's family and continuing story, just as we added two to the family of God today through baptism, and find how God is including you in both. Thanks. Would you da-da-da? And now we move on to communion. Excellent.